the much maligned 49ers defense. This is a unit that came into the game, I think, 25th against the run in DVOA. Uh, they were pretty good against the pass, believe it or not, but there were a lot of question marks about the 49ers defense. Fresh off a bye, what were they going to do? Were they really going to put Isaiah Oliver out there again after giving up 20 straight completions? This is the first play of the game. One, two, three, four, five defensive linemen. Two linebackers. That's new. New snickle. So the answer was no. And this is Doug Peterson, right? This is Trevor Lawrence, up and coming quarterback, real well respected offensive mind, talented quarterback, off of by themselves. And all the 49ers defense did was force a here's the possessions for the Jaguars punt, 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 fumble, field goal, interception, fumble. Interception, punt, punt. Against a six and three team on the road, off a bye, with a talented quarterback and a a very well respected offensive mind. So I would say uh, the 49ers passed their first test post bye with flying colors. And let's talk about why. And a big reason why is I mean they made a change, right? Diamond Lenore went inside. Amber Thomas went outside. It helps to have, you know, Chase Young, and we'll get to him in a second, but I mean, the 49ers, they did what they needed to do, and it was just by adding more athleticism onto the field. So let's get into uh, the defense's performance. So one of the questions coming out of the bye was, will Steve Wilkes blitz more? And the answer was no. So he blitzed on three plays, and the 49ers still pressured Trevor Lawrence on 16 of his 36 dropbacks. It was pretty incredible. And, And look at this. So I thought the 49ers did a really good job of I mean, before the snap, and we talked about it with J.P. Acosta here last week, and you have to muddy the picture pre-snap for Trevor Lawrence, and that's where he struggles. But this is first read, and they just did a good job of taking away the wide receivers from the Jaguars. There were a lot of coverage pressures and coverage sacks. And obviously, you know, when you have four talented players like the 49ers do up front, you're going to generate pressure eventually. But I thought this game said more about the 49ers' back seven, the secondary, and they were they performed really well. And that's not to take away anything from the defensive line because obviously they performed well as well. But uh, here's a look at Javon Hargrave. Like he just pushes the guy back and Eric Armstead is able to get, you know, the sack. But to me, watching this play, like this is on the cover. So the 49ers are going to get the type of coverage that they did against the Jaguars. You know, I mean, they're not going to lock a receiver down every play, but um, they're going to be in very good hands moving forward. So another underrated part about this game was I mentioned how you know, the 49ers had struggled coming into this game, stopping the run, but they held the Jaguars to three and a half yards per carry on 17 attempts. When you stop the run, you get the opportunity to rush the passer. And I thought, you know, a healthy Drew Greenlaw made a difference. Uh, Fred Warner said after the game that Greenlaw had more of a pep in his step, but just this seems very simple. But if you just watch Dre right here, like he's letting everybody else do the work for them. Like he's letting the big guys do the work for them not going anywhere, and the running back runs right to him. So makes a play, but I really think the way that they played against the run this game was, again, even more impressive than the pass for us. So it was complimentary football in the sense that the secondary did their job, the run defense did their job, and that's when uh, the horses up front are able to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. Here's another good look at you know the coverage being in sync, taking away the wide receivers. So Trevor Lawrence, watch Trevor Lawrence on this play. He's pumping the pass right now like he wants to get rid of the ball but nobody's open and I think the four, what the 49ers did really well is so in the couple weeks past they were just giving the wide receivers on the outside way too much room way too much space underneath and I think this game like they were content with Trevor Lawrence throwing the ball deep and they were going to make them complete those low percentage passes and by doing so you force him to pat the ball hold the ball and he just was not sure of himself at all off to our right right here Chase Young, chasing down the quarterback, almost comes up with a sack. So sometimes stopping the run is as simple as one of your high paid, highly played players up front win. So Javon Hargrave, he was outstanding. And PFF charts win percentage on the season for all defensive interior linemen. He's third um, in winning percentage. So he's been winning consistently, and this is no different. But seeing him make plays against the run, that's what they need him to do. So as you can see here, wins pretty easily. I think actually Fred Warner was 
just as impressive against the run. And I'm showing these plays because this is first and 10. Like you don't get to rush the passer if you're allowing five, six yards on first down. This may be boring to some of you, but I'm, I'm going to keep showing running plays because that was the difference in this game. And it helps to have a unicorn and linebacker, but the Jaguars, at least three or four plays, they had their tackles climb to Fred Warner. What are the odds that one of these guys are going to be able to get there? Like, just you're asking for it right there. This person, think about it, athletically is never going to get here before this player gets here. Former safety, 300 pound man. And th there was at least three or four reps where it just looked like that, man. And I mean, I love that. <laughs> Swimming at the end there. So there are three times where Steve Wilkes put Nick Bosa and Chase Young both in the A gaps. And I mean, that just has to terrify you as a center when you have those guys lined up. As you can see, uh, the center ends up going about four or five yards backward because of Bosa. It ends up being a first down. And honestly, it's just because Lenore hops inside here. He's going he's gonna to have to get used to playing inside and what he can and can't get away with. So when he is inside, you have to make sure that you stay outside. You can't cut inside, can't jump inside, force the run to flow back to everybody who is chasing in, in pursuit. So right here, if he just stays outside, the running back runs right into Fred Warner. And instead of a, uh, what, 9, 11, whatever, how many yards they got here, uh, it's a tackle for two yards. But because he hops outside, he gives uh, ETN the edge, and that's why they're able to pick up the first down. So a uh, good learning point for Lenore right here. I also think it's okay to acknowledge when the, the opponent gets over on you, right? So you're not going to be perfect every play. So the, the Jaguars, whenever you're in between the 40s, it's a shot play at every level, and they call a perfect, a beauty of a call. It almost looks like uh, the Philly special a little bit. So they're going to run an end around counter to the tight end. They're going to then pitch it back to Christian Kirk. And they're going to have the running back wheel up the sideline. There's just so many moving parts here. I'm going to blame Trey Greenlaw for not picking up the running back. He sees a reverse after initial handoff. So, of course, you're going to all trigger uh, toward number 13 there. But gets kind of caught in no man's land. So, if anything, kudos to Trevor Sword here at the bottom. He lets the route go. Sees Travis Etienne late and is able to come up with a hit. So perfectly play, uh, perfectly called play, I should say. And a good job, good awareness by number seven to eliminate the big play. And this is why you go get Chase Young. This is what the 49ers need from him, just to be a competent pass rusher. They have not had a competent edge rusher, edge rusher opposite of Nick Bosa all season. And here's a joint sack, sack fumble. But if you watch Lawrence, where he's looking, nobody's open again. So he's looking right. Nope. Nowhere to go there. His receiver is not even in his route yet. And then by the time he goes to a second read, it's just RIP. So that is a little bit secondary, a lot pass rush. Um, Nick Bosa, I mentioned how well Javon Hargrave has performed this season. Uh, Bosa is second in win percentage. Uh, to no surprise and that number should go up with young here really nice move there to the inside so we've already seen a couple reps here and we're still early in the game where young's made a difference obviously had he played by bosa to go after the ball but i mean it's good they're going to be tough to block when you can throw out competent rusher very good very good excellent so good luck opposing offensive lines so on the drive where the Jaguars did score and that, I guess, kick a field goal, the only thing that, you know, really haunted the 49ers was their missed tackles. And there's Dre right there. So the Jaguars, once they realize, hey, we can't block the 49ers, we're going to screen them to death. They just started getting out in space. And those are just things that, you know, that can happen. And Greenlaw did it. Fred Warner did it. And it was only one drive. And that's the only reason they score. So when there aren't these self-inflicted errors, uh, the 49ers defense was top notch. All right, this is almost deja vu just to the other side. So again, stopping the run, 
very important so you can rush the passer. Jaguars are asking this player to block this player and they're running away from where he has to go. What do they expect to happen here? Other than that, I don't know, but I'm sure the 49ers will take it. All right, so even if you're giving up yards and this happened to be an 80 play drive, you still gotta make a earn it, right? Third and four. So good recognition here by Fred Warner. 49ers, they're in man coverage across the board. Tayshawn Gibson, tight end. Christian Kirk in the slot, running back to the bottom of the screen. Fred Warner's like, nope, this is you. Uh, we're going to put our best player on theirs inside. Anyway, and I think, I mean, I know Mooney Ward had a rough one against the Vikings, but he's been very consistent, and he's just made guys earn it. And this is a really good coverage here. So in the slot, it's not easy to guard. Gets his head around, gets his hand on the ball, and makes, there you go, seatbelt. Uh, makes a really good play. And I, I wonder if that's going to be the case moving forward, right? If they're going to have uh, Mooney Ward travel with guys like, like if Mike Evans goes in the slot, have him go in the slot, and maybe leave Lenore or Ambry Thomas on the outside. That's something to keep an eye on. It's, it's not going to be easy because Lenore is going to have to guard guys like Tyler Lockett, um, DK Metcalf. Mike Evans, obviously, uh, Devonta Smith, A.J. Brown. Like, Think about the receivers that the 49ers are going to face over the next month. So like, if I'm going to go down swinging, I would rather go down swinging with my best, seven. Um, it, it, in this game, Lenore, he was matched up against Kirk on a, a few occasions, and he just showed that I'm not sure he can run with those type of guys. So that that's the only reason why I bring it up, uh, just something to keep an eye on moving forward. Um, as you can see here, more, more pressure. And it's really 98, who doesn't get credit for the sack. But, I mean, Hargrave was a menace in this game. He won so often, and he looked fresh. And, I mean, that's, you know, one of another big beneficiary of the bye week where guys, they, they have their legs back underneath them. Uh, Cleveland Ferro gets a gift thanks to Ambry Thomas. Okay, Ambry Thomas, top of the screen. If you just evaluate the player and not the name on the back of the jersey he was as close to incredible as it gets like is this a reception yeah of course sure whatever but if we're just watching his change of direction skills his fill that is a really good rep and that's sustainable because that tells me he's competitive that tells me you know he has the athleticism uh, to stay with a guy like Calvin Ridley, decent receiver, right? Probably C plus, B minus receiver. It's a good tune up for next game. But uh, this was would be the only target beyond seven yards, I think it was, for Thomas. A really good change that the 49ers had to make, right, to get Isaiah Oliver off the field. And I think uh, Thomas really earned the ability to stay on the field based on his performance against the Jacks. All right, so the 49ers did not cover the last trick play well. Mooney Ward kind of bailed him out there. Here's another trick play. So play action fake. They're going to roll Trevor Lawrence all the way across the field. The hope is they get a speedy wide receiver against Tayshawn Gibson, who's not pictured right now. But let's put him in the picture. And it's just a race to the other side of the field, right? No, wrong. Gibson's on top. Mooney does a good job of sinking right so there's nobody for him to guard and i've seen this time and time again i think i showed it with Oren burks a couple weeks ago where uh some defenders will just sit here stay and guard grass instead uh seven has the wherewithal to pick up the wide receiver like that is really good and instead of a home run play instead of a dpi uh, instead of you know a touchdown whatever it may be trevor lawrence has to tuck the ball and has nowhere to go so I think the 49ers were, were well prepared after that first trick play. All right, obvious passing down. All right, so it's third and one in the Jaguars. I think this speaks to how well the 49ers have stopped the run. They're gonna come out in a three by one. They have no interest in running the ball because it hasn't worked all game. Instead, they're gonna rely on a passing game that really hasn't worked either, and here, are the results so nobody to throw to by the time trevor's back foot hits 97's already in his face 
come on, man. How do you call plays against that? And Lawrence makes a grave mistake, tries to force it to the running back, throws it a billion miles an hour when he's two feet away from him. And Talano Funga, Johnny on the spot, is there, but, I mean, could have been called for a hold. And let's look at this angle because Ohio State defensive line coach Larry Johnson, who coached both of these guys, teaches when they get around the corner, once they turn the corner, you're supposed to fall forward, right? You're supposed to use your momentum to lean into the quarterback, and that's how you sack. So you can kind of see Bosa do it. First of all, the fact that he's able to get around the edge in one, two, three, four steps, and he already beat him is pretty impressive. Like There's a reason he was the deepest player of the year and it's reps like these. People were a little frustrated that he wasn't able to beat, um, rack up a bunch of sacks, but, I mean, Bosa's been winning consistently. So, there's a lean, sack, interception. <laughs> yeah, Bosa looked fresh. Bosa was playing in Florida. He said after the game that he could feel the humidity as soon as he stepped onto the field, So, or se stepped off the plane. Um, yeah, this defensive line is nasty. There's no doubt about it. But we knew the defensive line was nasty, right? What we didn't know was that there was an – Uber athletic cornerback who man 20 looks really good and I know he wasn't targeted but only focusing on a cornerback when he's targeted and only referencing like stats target like targets uh, really sells him short because there's like 80 other 80% 80 of the plays are not targeted and these these snaps matter so that's good change of direction um, he has the athleticism to turn and run with guys and it, it really seems like it's that simple Yes, there's going to be a step up in class moving forward for Ambry Thomas, but I think he showed a lot in this game. So here we go, top of the screen. This time, Ambry's in the slot against Calvin Ridley, who gives him one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> five head fakes. Neither of them work. So I think what Ambry does well here is just stay square. Doesn't fall for any of those. That is picture-perfect coverage right there. So he has the arm length. 75th percentile he has the speed 78th percentile is it as simple as just having practice reps right so throwing a cornerback out there during the two-minute drill which is what Ambry did the first couple weeks and like throwing him out there cold you're almost asking for it right like how is he going to be sharp when that's the only time he plays so I, I think Thomas playing in the slot outside wherever it is during practice just knowing that you're going to play meaningful reps will really help his mindset and I think that showed uh, during this game all right so you force an incompletion on one play you come back on the next play this is actually the same concept that the Cardinals ran with Thomas where he was kind of caught in between and not guarding either receiver this time he does a good job of feathering hedging bleeding whatever you want to call it so once he sees the balls out of his hands he triggers, and then he just competes and forces a fumble. Should have 100% had a touchdown um, here. You can see. <laughs> it's hilarious because, I mean, they can laugh about it after the fact. It's a good move, by the way, right there. Honestly, this is dirty, and that's how people get hurt. Um, I'm so, if you just reverse the roles right there, and that's a quarterback running in, that's a flag. So that, that kind of sucks, but I think just the competitive nature here, right, to fight through the whistle gets it out. Um, it was Jair Brown. So you can see the coaches, like, they're <laughs> uh, D winners. Isaiah Oliver. I don't know which coach this is, but they had three guys on the field. He – Cont George Odom continues to come onto the field. Who is this? There's uh, Jagger Brown. Kyle Shanahan, four yards onto the field. He said he thought the play was over afterward, and then he noticed that everybody's running. Um, casually walks off, hops off. How do, like, if you're the ref, is that why he threw his hat off? Yeah, okay. So he throws his hat because he's running into freaking coaches, so that's an easy penalty. Um, man, 
it's a bummer that Ambry didn't get this touchdown because that would have been really cool for him. But, I mean, the forced fumble, they get the ball. They end up going to score. Really, really good game for him. So, top of the screen here, um, another Ambry, ta- uh, Ambry Thomas target. He gets called for a, a pass interference, and I think it's, you know, right there where he still has – we're still holding him. I don't know. It's it's kind of ticky tack, and it's tough to see just from the angles that we get from. I don't know if they showed it on the TV broadcast, but when the wide receiver is initiating the contact, right there, right there, right there again, what do you expect the DB to do? He has to put his hands on him because the other person's hands are on him. Um, so didn't really agree with the call, but if you. <laughs> If you watch this ref right here, one of the most aggressive flag throws that you will ever see. Look at that bad boy. He launched that flag. Goodness. I didn't like it. You can tell the sideline doesn't really like it either. Maybe they should, again, maybe they showed a better angle um, on the TV broadcast, but it's a competitive rep running down the field with a wide receiver who runs 4 4. I think the reaction, like you could tell from Ambry, they like, I didn't do anything wrong. But again, like he's in position, and that's what you want to see. So this was uh, far and away the best coverage game that the 49ers played. And, and maybe it is as simple as, you know, putting Ambry on the field full time, kicking Diamond Lenore inside. As you can see, like, there's nowhere for Trevor Lawrence to throw the ball. Who's he going to throw it to? If we watch the top of the screen, covered, covered. Talano Funga is not pictured right now, but he's over the top. Let's see if I can drag him over here. There he is. Like he's over the top. He has that taken care of. If we go to the bottom of the screen, and Trevor Lawrence isn't even looking there, who's open? You're naturally going to gravitate to where the QB is looking anyway, but um, just gives you a good idea of how in tune and how married the back was with the front and that looked like 49ers football they stopped the run uh they got the offense into long down and distances they were able to rush the passer and the corners were consistently in position not gonna be easy next week just because mike evans he is going to probably be targeted 15 times so it's it's a big step up in class to go from guarding calvin ridley to mike evans but i am fascinated to see not only uh how we see chase young get acclimated because I mean, he was lined up in the A-gap with Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa was lined up over the center for the first time all year. So I think Steve Wilkes knows that, you know, he has another chess piece and he can move Bosa around a little more. But I really want to see how Amber does against a guy like Mike Evans. So uh, looking forward to next week. Uh, 49ers are are significant favorites. And we'll get a chance to see how the defense uh, reacts. Thanks for watching. I will be back with the offense. Um, If you learned anything, if you liked anything from this uh, defensive breakdown, Go back and check out the opening drive from the offense. It's quick. Uh, Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what else you want to see.